Hello, my name is Tefuna, and in this lecture, you will learn about inheritance in Python. So you don't always have to start from scratch when writing a class. So if the class you're writing is specialized version of another class you've wrote, you can use inheritance. So when one class inherits from another, it takes on the attributes and methods of the first class. So the original class is called the parent class. In this case, animals is the parent class and the new class is the uh, child class. So the child class can inherit any or all of the attributes and methods of its parent class. So, but it's also free to define new attributes and methods of its own. So we have a init method for a child class. So when you're writing a new class based on an existing class, you will open want to call the init uh, method from the parent class so this will initialize any attributes that were defined in the parent init method and make them available in the child class as an example let's uh, create some car here so remember we created car in the previous lecture and let's create uh, so what car is this yeah let's create the electric car yes yeah let's let's create the electric car here uh, an electric car is just a specific kind of car, so we can uh, base our new electric car class on the car class we wrote earlier. So the we are, but then we will only uh, have to write code for the attributes and behaviors for to specific uh, electric cars. So here, uh, remember, actually, let me delete this. Remember, we in previous lecture we did uh, write one to three functions and three methods. Uh, each of them is printing something here, so let's run it again, remember? And as you can see here, uh, for example, we first define the car make and model, then year of production, the gearbox, and here we are calling this method, for example, here we uh, use the BMW drive, in now driving, stop driving, drive, start drifting, uh, so the Honda Civic 2015 manual is drifting, uh, BMW is now driving, so we can actually delete this because we will add new methods to it. So actually, let let them uh, stay here for now. So uh, here we will create a new method, define put or fill gas or full gas, or actually this instead of writing like this. fill gasoline and here we also use self here and here after that we will read make a model is is on a gas station and fill gas in the tank or yeah uh, fill gas Field gas here and here gas full here and now uh, yes the normal car will have a need to fill gasoline but here we will need to in electrical we will need to go to charge station or go home to charge our car right so after that so here uh, without identification here we will delete this because this is uh, the another class but we will define it at, as an inheritance so here we will class create a class here but this class is going to be electric car and car here so after that we will use these two dots here and after that we will use an uh, init right so here define in it i will explain here we will also use the super keyword which it's so it's, it's interesting and here it makes the work quite easy here so we will make a model year and gear box and here make and uh, model model year and gear box after that inside this def uh, in it function we will use super and super that uh, we will first go to pass the init and first we will enter the make and model then um, then 
remember we don't uh, we are not using self anymore and i will explain that so year and after that gear box right perfect and after that so outside this we will create a new class actually let's this is so much here for now so we will is not now and here actually we can also so here let's look at this so we have print function and we are printing this cars information every time uh, we need to write the print function fill it in add text so we don't want this we can also add the print function to car here so whenever we call this this will print the car attributes here so def here print information so we will also we, we, will, we will also can use this uh, function from electric car instance right so uh, print all or the here show info here and after that we will print f here first we will do let's make the write the car car make car make yeah instead of writing this we can also do for example uh self not make and model and after that we will enter self we will also add year year so after that this actually add new line the make and model year info Make a model and year so self dot year dot year and after that uh, we will also add the new line and gearbox type uh, which is we're gonna also use self dot gearbox that's it perfect so here we car info and we can also add this year here that's it perfect so we can delete this now so now i will explain uh, how we created this electric car here so we start with car here right here look at this we defined the car here so when you create a child class the parent class must be part of the current file and must appear before the child class in the file so if we delete this and put here before the class we will get an error because for uh, electric car can't see this because we are getting from this oops uh, sorry so we are getting this class to here and python doesn't work like that so it needs to go a little downwards here downwards downwards here and that's why we are we have to define inherit from after uh, our car class is created so here and uh, we then define the child class which is electric car and the name then the name of the param, uh, pa parent class must be included in the parenthesis in the definition of the child class and after the init method takes in the information required to make a car instance so here remember uh, we we created the super function here so the super function is a special function that allows you to call a method from the parent class so this uh, line tells python to call the init method from a car which gives an electric car instance all the attributes defined in that method so the name super comes from a convention of calling the parent class or a super class and the child class a subclass so we test whether inheritance is working properly uh, by trying to create now electric uh, car with the same kind of information we provide uh, when making a regular car right so we can also uh, define the new uh, function a new method so remember we uh, use the fuel gasoline so electric cars can drift can drive stop driving and we also have ele electric cars info and here we will uh, define the new so charge car right charge 
charge electric electric and here remember it's actually we can also uh, use the charge car but here we use the gasoline and here we are using electric so it's make more sense for uh, exp exponential problems so here we will so say make a model is on a supercharged station super charge station and charging charge charged with electricity <laughs> electric and here battery battery 100 percent all right so here now let's run this because it will not get an anything because we haven't written our code yet and here after that we will create a new uh, gasoline car so here we will write for example let's again create the volvo here or toyota so my toyota here and car so we're gonna create the car for now car toyota remember we are writing make and model together toyota corolla and the year is 2000, uh, 2015 and gearbox is out automatic and here we will my that to the corolla uh, we have several functions here we have show info fill gasoline stop driving start drifting drive and here let's use the show info because we read uh, we wrote this function newly and here as you can see here we are seeing year car info and gearbox type here and we can also drive the toyota corolla uh drive and as you can see driving let's now stop here my toyota corolla stop driving and then uh, we will fill the gas so fill gasoline and as you can see here we first it is now driving is now stopped so toyota corolla is now gas station is on is on a gas station and filled gas which gas condition is full now and we will create another here so now we will create the let's create a tesla here which is the tesla is an electronic vehicle and here um with my tesla here car uh, tesla here i didn't know the tesla models here uh, but maybe let's create the plate i think there was some model called plate and here let's uh year is 2020 doesn't here and the gearbox type is electric right electric gearbox gear gearbox actually as i heard the most electric vehicles doesn't have gearbox uh, for uh, like in gasoline vehicles but i don't know i just wrote an electric gearbox so it, it doesn't matter this is just a programming here for now and here my tesla the uh, my tesla here we will first show info about our uh, electric car oops uh, instead of remember here we instead of writing car here we need to write the electric car here instance electric car sorry here and now uh, so here we can also my tesla that we can use the charge electric yeah as you can see here my tesla charge uh, and let's actually drive firstly my tesla my tesla that drive and my tesla charge electric and here as you can see here we firstly uh, write uh, the wrote the toyota corolla year gearbox so this is the info function this is a separate function here and now we are uh, now drive it stop here toyota corolla is on a gas station and field gas uh, so gas tank is full car this is also we are right we are here uh, showing info with this function and after that tesla plate 2012 um, electric electric gearbox is now driving 
the Tesla plate is on a supercharged station and charged with electricity. Battery uh, condition is 100%. So this is how the the inheritance works with this example here so you can do this with animals with another object subject so you can with computers here for example you have a computer it might be a notebook so notebook have uh, different functions for example open the lid close the lid in like it, it's portable you can uh, change its position uh, but with desktop computer it's uh, more hard to change uh, your position or take it from there to here so uh, now this is how the works so there's a no limit to how much you can specialize our electric car class you, you here in this example you can add as many attributes and methods you need to model electric car to whether degree of accuracy you need so an attribute or method that could belong to any car rather than one that's specific to an electric car should be added to the car class instead of electric class. So then anyone who uses the car class will have the functionality available as well. And the electric car class will only contain code for the information and behavior specific to electric vehicles. Hello, my name is Taifun, and in this lecture, we will try to change our MAC address on the Kelly machine. So let's open up a terminal here with this Control Alt Tab shortcut here. And after that, actually, we open twice, right? No. Yes. So af after that, we need to change the MAC address. So to change the MAC address, you will need to install the Net Tools. A package but in most linux distributions this tool is already available however uh, if it's not installed you can install it using this command here sudo apt get update here enter your password here it will take just the five or ten seconds after that just install the apt get install net tools here as you can see here it's already installed uh, as i said it comes pre-installed uh, in most Linux distributions however you can check that or install that with this com uh, comments here so it will prompt for your password when you install something with sudo you enter your password and once the tools have been installed uh, you can view the mac address with if config command so it, uh, here if uh, this command is not working you can also use the sudo if config it will mostly work here without a problem and here if everything goes well uh, you will see this output similar to this right so there's a lot of information here so let's break it down one by one and i need to open the gromit here so i can draw something on the screen though it will be more explanatory here right and yes apply home i think this yeah we can write like that home yes sorry for that we're gonna fix that here so as i said there's a lot of information here and you will learn what which and what these information means so there are two values called eth0 and low here so these are the two separate adapters so the ETH0 is the NIC, right? So there's a LU here is the loopback adapter. For now, we can ignore the loopback adapter and uh, let's go with the init field here. So the init field, this is the first init field, represents the private local IP address of the Kali machine. So, and the init 6 here obviously is the IP version 6 address of the Kali mission. And here, we, what we, our information is here, right? That we're gonna use in this lecture. The ether is the MAC address. Uh, and this is the field we want to change. And as you can see here, our MAC address is 000C29. 97 05 and 57 
so we will change this mac address here so for now we will go to actually let me write uh, okay okay delete that so oops there's a something again so the if config So if you want to change the MAC address, you can't do so while the our NIC is turned on. So first, you have to shut down the network interface. And to shut down the interface, you can use this sudo if... Actually, let me clear that firstly. So sudo if config eth0 down. That's it. So this command will shut down the NIC named ETH0, as you can see. And as you can see here, we have the tab here, which says the network connection has been disconnected. So we are disconnected and we turned our NIC down. So here, oh sorry, yes. So here, uh, if you don't see an error while... Uh, writing this command this means that the command run successfully so now if you type the if config here if config again you will see this output here so now uh, this command here as you can see here we got nothing here uh, we not, not nothing we, we are just seeing the loop back and not eth0 here so this is the output we got here. Now you will only see the loopback adapter and that the ETH0 is turned down. So to change the MAC address, you can run a uh, command here, this sudo if config, sudo if config ETH0 HW ether here. And let's change our MAC address to 1122. 33AABCC here and press enter. Oops, uh, we got here, and as you can see, we got an error here because we need to use double dots and not this character with commas here. So we will do that here. That's it. Cannot assign the requested address here. Let's see what's wrong with that. 33. Four four five five here and zero zero cannot assign requested address. So what we are doing wrong here is on MAC addresses the first byte should be even. So here uh, now we will change it to for example the first byte to zero zero because in bytes in decimal points it's actually even here we are actually writing hexadecimal here and as you can see here we got no error here so remember that when you're writing for a mac address your first byte should always be even so if there's a no error like this this means the command runs successfully so at this point we can turn on the interface again by running sudo if config oh sorry sudo if config actually let me clear that clear sudo if config eth0 up and now let's run the if config command again to see if our changes on mac address took place so sudo if config and as you can see here uh, that the uh, MAC address of ours has been changed successfully. Now, if you want to scan something on the network, uh, this MAC address will be sh shown instead of a real MAC address. So now, in next lecture, we will also create a Python script to change this MAC address automatically. So I'm waiting you next lecture. Hello, my name is Dave Poon. In previous lectures, we have written manual commands to change our Mac. Ideally, we would like to write a Python script that will help us to change it. To do this, we need to find a way to run bash commands with the help of a Python. Luckily, Python has a standard library that is used to run system commands called swap 
process. So this library allows you to interact with the underlying operating system. So to import this library into your module, you can simply write this command import sub process. That's it. So to run a command, uh, the sub process has a method called run. And using this method, you can execute system commands on your operating system. So if you want to see the information about ETH0, you can run this command here, sub, uh, this code here. So sub process then run. We're gonna, after that, inside the parentheses, we're gonna enter this curly braces here. Uh, and we will enter the if con config, if config. And after that, we will enter the ETH zero here. And after that, we're gonna use this comma and we will write shell equals true. That's it. And so let's run it. And as you can see here, we got the same output if it would written in this uh, our terminal. So this function requires a list of commands. Uh, the other parameter, the shell shell true means that we want to see the output printed to the console and that's what it that did here so if you run this uh, code you will see uh, an output similar to running the if config uh, eth0 command and also keep in mind that you need to be a root user to run the command so it should uh, like for example so we need to go to pycharm projects of uh, our here and run this python script so cd oh let's actually clear first there cd pi charm projects here and ls here as you can see here we are seeing our main that p pi here and let's first see what is inside in our main that pi and here this is the code that's right written in our main that pi here now we're gonna run this so python oops of course we need to as i said we need to use the sudo uh, python3 main.py and that's it as you can see here we got the same same output as we did in uh, the previous ip config command with just without the python here so now that you know how to run system commands using python you can repeat preceding commands using python so now we're gonna firstly import the sub process so of course we need to create a name if name here actually you learned uh, what this name means name main means in previous lectures so if name main here double underscore and after that we will need to use this double dots here so interface interface is gonna be eth0 and our new mac so new mac you can also ask uh, from the user to enter a new mac but you can also written in python code so it depends on your needs but in this case i don't need to get an input from the user because i will write this program so in in this case for example zero zero one 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 two two three three five five and one one here Or, uh, for example, instead of writing these numbers, we can also do this here. So, after that, we will print here that, as you remember, we firstly needed to shut down the interface in order to change the MAC address. And now what we're going to do is notify the user that we are shutting down the here. Of course, we need to use the formats here. Format shutting down the eth uh, the interface that interface that upper case so we will notify that to the user that we are shut actually let me uh, write it down and then explain so you, you shutting down the interface interface here and in interface that upper here so we will notify to the user that oops did we close the grommet here because i can't reach it so next toggle clear screen okay so here we are seeing to the user that 
write the interface on the screen so if our interface is eth0 we will print the shutting down the interface eth0 here right so this is how it uh, it will work this is just a good practice to notify the user about what uh, what are we shutting down here after that we're gonna use the sub process that run uh, of course we as we notify the user that we are shutting down the interface we need to shut down the interface so after that we will enter the curly braces here if config here of course we will need to write in the screen string if config here and after that we will again enter eth0 or instead of writing eth0 we can also enter the interface so it will be more practical so if uh, if we need to change the eth0 to for example wireless adapter we will just need to change this wlan0 and it will affect all of the program here right so eth0 interface and after that we're gonna enter down that's it so let me actually see if my voice is written yes perfect and after that what we're gonna do is we are print actually yeah yeah we don't need that so we're gonna print la like let's write um, let's changing your or changing interface or changing the let's actually use the format so that we will notify that changing our interface so we will in interface is interface mac address interface to make it uppercase to make it like shown up to the user so changing interface mac address mac address to oops actually mac address to here we will write our mac address and after that we will use the our new mac here that's it and after that we're gonna change so since we shut and shut shut down the interface we need to change interface as we did in previous lecture so now we're gonna do is uh, sub process dot run and here we will enter the races again here and now if config oops so if config here again we will enter the interface uh, and after that we will enter the uh, hw after that ether and after that the new mac new mac that's it and after that we will uh, again run sub process dot run so we will bring it back uh, we will make it uh, so turn on the internet interface so run here if config and then we will enter the interface and after that we will enter the up up that's it so now after that if there's no errors here we will print that the network network interface turned on and here that's it so now let's run this program and as you can see here we are getting the operation is not permitted let's actually save it and run it on the here with sudo and as you can see here we changed our mac address here so now we first actually let me run it again clear clear so let's run the if config here actually let's change the mac address here to 55 21 47 29 and so on so let it be here and now we will enter the uh, first let's print our the if config here oops if config here if config and as you can see this is our mac address this is old mac address actually let me write that note that down here let's grow it okay 
Let me. This is the new. So this is the old MAC address. Old. Uh, which is zero zero one one two two forty five and twenty four and sixty seven sixty seven that's it so now uh, here we will also a new mac address and we will see right now how the mac address changes here it's clear again clear again config and this is our as you can see this is the same mac address we didn't change it anything so we will enter the sudo python3 and main.py main.py and as you can see here we changed our mac address to zero zero actually instead of writing this as as you can see we are notifying to the user that we change our mac address a new mac address is this and now let's check this out and as you can see here our new mac address is zero zero five five twenty one forty seven twenty nine forty seven twenty nine and sixty seven that's it and this is our new mac address so now that we have learned how to run comments on a system and how to change mac address of a system using python we will stop our lecture here and in next lecture we will look at the information gathering and different linux hacking techniques here so uh, since we did this that i will share this program with you and you can modify share or if you have any problems you can ask me directly here so we will name it the uh, mac address changer that's it super hacker program name and i will share this program with you so in this lecture we learned the basics of networking and how we can protect ourselves on a local network by spoofing our mac address for scanning purposes and this uh, lecture helped us to get a deeper insight into the networking aspects of the computer system as well as uh, how we can use python to protect and mask our identity in a local network so in next lectures you will learn more about networking and python hacking here so i'm waiting you in next lecture hello my name is typhoon and in this lecture we will create a simple scanner to scan hosts in our local network and find their mac addresses in order to create the scanner we need to first understand what address resolution protocol is and how it can be used for creating a network scanner so address resolution protocol in its simplest form is a translation tool that helps us to translate ip addresses helps us to translate ip addresses into mac addresses so whenever a device needs to communicate with the device within the same network same local network it needs the device mac address so let's say the for example let me actually uh, open my diagram here to see so we more detailed here so here so let's say the typhoon's device wants to communicate with johnny's device in a local network so in order to find the mac address of a johnny's device the first device will first look inside the internal list maintained uh, by it called the arp list here so for example every computer has this kind of list here for example this ip and mac address for example this ip has this mac address this ip has dues ip2 and mac2 or ip this here and mac this so most computers this or networks uh, we have those kind of lists that stores 
the ARP list. So now, uh, in order to find the MAC address of Johnny's device, the telephone's device, as I said, will first look inside an internal list maintained by it called the ARP catch. ARP catch. It's also called ARP list in, in some. Uh, so, uh, so it will check it, the ARP catch, to see whether Johnny's device IP addresses are mapped to a physical MAC address inside its table. So this is called ARP list, ARP table as well. So you can check the ARP table on your PC by, uh, by typing this command here. So let me go back to Linux here and here. So you can check the ARP list by using this ARP, ARP and A. That's it. So here you can see that it lists out the IP addresses corresponding mac addresses associated with them so you can use the same command in windows as well so if the corresponding mac address of the requested device is not present locally here uh, so as you can see here we are not seeing the another ip address other than ours in this case in telephone's device so this telephone's device will send out a broadcast request to the whole network to ask which device has this respective IP address. Yes, actually, let me get my pen here and draw some things on the screen. So here, as I said, telephone's device will ask to all of the devices to ask this uh, if they have the IP addresses. Actually, the Typhoon's device not ask that like that. Instead, it is here. Instead, Typhoon's device will ask the router to ask this IP address here. In this case, router is going to find the Jonas device, and after that, uh, Jonas device will get, send a signal back. So in our case, since uh, we are asking who has this IP address, uh, in this case is uh, jo uh, Johnny's device. So these devices that are not Johnny's device will ignore this request, while the Johnny's device will give out a reply with the corresponding MAC address here, right? So here, uh, this way, the Typhoon's device will get to know the MAC address of the Jonas device. So uh, once the both uh, devices get to know each other, the communication between them can follow. So once the Typhoon's device gets the MAC address of Jonas device, it will update the ARP table and it will write, for example, Jonas device has this IP and this MAC, right? And after that, they will be like friends, right? And that's it. So uh, here you, in this illustration, you've seen how this works here. And now that we understand how ARP works, we can start working on our, creating our own ARP scanner with Scapy to find out the MAC addresses of these devices. So you might be wondering why we need an ARP scanner. Well, knowing the MAC addresses of a device can help us to perform man in the middle attack. So as known, meet him here. So meet him. Man in meet him attack, uh, which we will perform in next lectures. So I'm waiting you in next lecture to write that program. Hello, my name is Stephen, and in this lecture, we will create an ARP scanner, address resolution protocol scanner using Scapia. So the address resolution protocol works on the Ethernet layer. So using Scapia, we will firstly import the Ethernet layer here. So now let's open the PyCharm or IDE. And now we will firstly write the import the statements. So, 
here. So in previous versions of Scapy, you can import the Ether, uh, ARP, Ether, ARP, and SRP uh, libraries like that. But in this updated version of Scapy, you can't import. Instead, you will do this here. Import, firstly, and you will get that Ether libraries from import uh, from from scapy layers uh, and after that you inside the scapy layers you will import ethern and arp from that and oops sorry layers l2 and you will enter ether from that also from scapy dot layers l2 import also arp from l2 here but the s for srp you will write this scaping layers uh rest yeah receive here or i think it might be the send receive here send receive or send receive here and we will import srp from the send receive library so now uh so we imported the layer so if all the bits of mag addresses are set to one this means that packets is broadcast and it should go to every device in the network so scapy uses hexadecimal representation so we will create a, this broadcast broadcast variable for to denote the broadcast address so here broadcast and we will use all the set all the variables to one ff ff f and ff that's it so then we can create the ethernet layer packet and put the destination as a broadcast right so we will also need to define the ip range uh, we want to scan in my case let's actually find what our ip config uh, is and our what broadcast ip is and it's actually clear that if config and as you can see here we are, our net mask is this our init address is this and our broadcast address is this so in this case we will scan we will scan from one nine oops we will scan from one nine two one six eight thirteen from thirteen zero and that from one nine two one six eight thirteen to two hundred fifty five right so now what we're gonna do is we will write IP range, IP range here, and after that we will write, oops, not this, here, uh, 192, 168, 13. So 192, one, oops, instead we will use the uh, strings, 192, 8, 13, and 1, and we will do slash here 21, 24. So this 24. Uh, means that we want to scan from zero from last digit zero to 255 you will you also learn, you can uh, actually I, I think you learned this in previous lectures here uh tcp ip lectures so but i will explain this again so this represents that we want to scan all the devices starting with ip address 192.168.13 one up to 192.168.13.255 so the last eight bits are called the bit mask and represents the number of hosts we want to scan so remember that an ip address is 32 bits and we say here that we want to mask 24 bits so the remaining eight bits eight bits are addressable only so which means that we are only scanning the last 
256 hosts in the network. So now to create the ARP layer packets, we will use the ARP my ARP layer, ARP layer, and AR. We will use this ARP labor, uh, ARP library that we inserted, imported from the scape layers L2 packet, and now ARP. We will enter the PDST. equals ip range so that's it so now that we have created two layers uh, ether and arp next we will create a packet with both both of these layers so we will packet the equals ether layer here and ARP layer. And we also quickly need to create the ether layer here. It's uh, so easy. We'll just ether layer. And after that, we will enter the ether. And inside this parenthesis, we will enter the destination DST as our broadcast, right? So we will here we will get this broadcast inside this ether layer. That's it. So after that, what we're gonna do is oops, sorry. So what we're gonna do is now uh, we will send this packet as a broadcast. To do this, we need to SRP function. So ANS here, we will use uh, the ANS and UNANS. UNANS. Here, as we will use SRP, we will enter the packet. The interface is going to be, in this case, let's say the ETH0 because we will use ETH0 here. And timeout. Timeout is going to. Mm, two, I think. Yeah, two is okay. So. Packet here is the name of a packet we want to send. And E phase is the network interface card, NIC, we want to use to send this packet. And the timeout, you, uh, as you can see, it is to make sure that if we, if we don't get a reply in two seconds, this means that device is most probably offline. So SRP returns both answered and unanswered packets so we are interested in answered packets from online devices only so now uh, to get the ip addresses and mac addresses of the online devices we can write the for loop uh, so we can iterate over the answer to see uh, the ip and corresponding mac addresses so for snd and rcv in a on s here and we will use the, create a new IP. So let's use this. So we will create a new IP. Uh, this will take actually let me see if it's recording. Yes. So IP here. We will create a new variable IP and we'll take the RCV parenthesis ARP here and PS PSRC. That's it. And after that we will also use the MAC address here. So RCV as well. And uh, in this case, in the, we will use the ether and src and after that we will print the online online or i first we will write the ip this actually let's use the format here so ip we will use the ip so as you can see here with receive arp dot PSRC, we got the IP address from the receive array and also we got the MAC address from the receiver with saying ether here. So now what we're gonna do is after that we will use the new line or we can also use tab so it will be here and after that we will use MAC. Actually let's use the two tab 
So MAC address is going to be MAC. That's it. So here, the RCV represents the packets that have been received by the sender. So to get the IP address, we can use the ARP layer. And to get the MAC address, we can uh, use the header layer. So remember, the fields set in the packets correspond to the respective layer. So the complete code will look like this here. And let's run this. Check this. And as you can see, we got an error here in line 12. So what's the problem here? So the permission error. So as you can see, we need to run it with sudo here. So we will go to this. So it will nice terminal look. And we will see the to pi charm projects to the phone ls. And as you can see, this is our program. So now what we're gonna do is main uh, python sudo here, of course, sudo python three main dot pi and call it. And as you can see here, we got these packets here. So as you can see, we wrote received seven packets and got three answers, remaining two hundred fifty three packets. And as you can see here, now we. You can see the MAC and IP addresses of all the devices available in the network. And the actually, let me if config and let's see what our MAC address is here. So, actually, we can also use let's uh, get a new Windows machine uh, into, onto our network and see if this um, program of ours will show that Windows new added Windows machine to it. So, I will. Now let's turn on the Windows machine and virtual machine here and we'll get back in two seconds. And here I added my Windows machine to the same network. And now let's check this out. And as you can see here, we added the new Mac address and new iPad address and Mac address to the output. And here, let's see if this is the mac address of our windows machine and here as you can see it we have the same ip address on the our target machine and here let's see on the linux side oh sorry not like this on here and as you can see here it's the same address here so we successfully wrote our program here uh, you can see that the, all the results obtained in our scan match these values. So you can take a look at these values or you can add new devices. You can also, like, if there's a hundred devices on, our, on your local network, you can scan all of these devices according to their MAC addresses, IP addresses. So here, uh, also keep in mind that there's a, there was a, some uh additional report here let's actually use that now so now let's go to our Kali machine so here uh, you might see this weird 254 uh, ip address so here this represents this year mac address and this year represents the dhcp server so DHCP server assigns IP addresses to the devices in a network when the devices are configured to automatic IP assignment. So, and also this represents the default gateway in the network. So in this section, we learned how data is sent from one device to another over the network. We learned about how data is encapsulated in the TCP IP protocol and what fields are added to each header. Next, uh, we learned about a very important network manipulation and packet crafting tool called SCAPI here. And we also learned how to craft packets using SCAPI and how these packets can send over the network. So we then learned about address resolution protocol. And finally, we created an ARP scanner to get the our internet protocol addresses and MAC addresses of live devices in our network we also added windows device we've we seen the ip and mac addresses match and 
in next lectures we will do more awesome and fantastic practical topics like this so i'm waiting you in next lecture hello my name is steve Fong. welcome to our nmap lecture in this lecture we will dive into the exciting world of network reconnaissance so today we will explore a crucial task for penetration testers and system administrators like finding online hosts so we will discover how nmap the go-to tool for network scanning offers enhanced host detection capabilities and provides valuable insights beyond the traditional ping utilities segment one the importance of host discovery before we begin our exploration of nmap's capabilities let's understand why finding online hosts is such a fundamental task in today's interconnected world where networks span vast geographic areas on the internet links countless devices being able to identify active machines within a network or on the internet is crucial penetration testers rely on host discovery to identify potential entry points and vulnerabilities while system administrators use it to monitor network health and ensure the smooth operation of their systems segment two the nmap pink scan so nmap's pink scan feature takes host detection to the next level by sending a series of probes so the nmap goes beyond the ecmp echo request commonly used by traditional ping utilities like uh, pink here for example pink uh, let's ping to ourselves here on our machine and as you can see this is just a pink right so nmap goes beyond this echo request commonly used like this so this comprehensive approach increases the accuracy and reliability of host detection allowing us to gather valuable information about the online entities within a target network so uh, segment three we can execute a ping scan to launch a ping scan with the nmap so we uh, we will utilize this comment here so uh, this code here so nmap sn and here we will enter our target right so the sn here option instructs nmap to disable port scanning and focus solely on the host discovery phase it's worth uh, noting that the nmap supports a wide range of target specifications including ip version 4 ip version 6 addresses host names and network ranges defined using the wildcards and cedar notations so for example to scan the local network uh, we will first need to understand learn what is our local network ip starts with here and now we will use this nmap sn here 192.168. 0 point, uh, 13 point, uh, 1 and 24 here so and as you can see now we are scanning the our host so segment 4 analyzing the results so once the ping scan is complete nmap provides us with a comprehensive list of hosts that responded to its probing packets so these active machines represent the online entities within the target network segment or the internet so by examining the results we can gain insights into the network composition identifying potential bottlenecks or misconfigurations and further refine our understanding of the target environment segment five uncovering additional details nmap's pink scans offer more than just a host discovery so when executed with sufficient privileges on uh, local ethernet networks nmap can also identify mac addresses and associated vendors based on mac address identifiers this additional information allows us to gain insight into the devices present on the network aiding in network inventory management and security assessments so in order to do that we will just add sudo before nmap to run it with sudo privileges and here you will see also the mac addresses right here segment six under the hood how nmap works to understand the mechanics behind the nmap's pink uh, so uh, this pink scans here so let's delve into the inner workings of this powerful tune this sn option 
as mentioned earlier, disables port scanning and focuses solely on the host discovery phase. Depending on the user's privileges, Nmap utilizes various techniques to determine the online status of a host. So when executed as privileged users here, uh, so Nmap employs a combination of techniques. So it sends TCP sync a packet to the port 443 and TCP acknowledge. So TCP, TCP, TCP ACK packet to the port 80 and ICMP echo and timestamp request. So this diverse probe helps to ensure that even hosts with restrictive firewall rules can be detected. So if the user running Nmap doesn't have the capability to send raw packets, it employs the connect system call to the to send the scene packets on ports 80 and port 443. Segment 7 exploring local Ethernet networks. When scanning local Ethernet networks as privileged users, Nmap activates ARP neighbor discovery, so further uh, enhancing host detection capabilities, so by leveraging ARP requests. Nmap can identify MAC addresses and associated vendors, and this information becomes invaluable in understanding the composition of the network and identifying the types of devices co connected. So, in conclusion, Nmap revolutionizes the way we discover online hosts with its uh, robust pink scan capabilities. And by leveraging Nmap's extensive probing techniques and privileged user functionalities, penetration testers and system administrators can gain a comprehensive understanding of their networks. Remember, host discovery is the first step towards a secure and efficient system. So go ahead, unleash the power of Nmap and embark your network reconnaissance journey. Hello, my name is Typhoon, and in this lecture, we will explore the fascinating world of a network reconnaissance. So Nmap is renewed for its extensive range of host and port discovery techniques, allowing penetration testers and system administrators to gather critical information about their networks. By utilizing these techniques, we can effectively scan hosts even in the most restricted environments. So let's explore some of the key techniques employed by Nmap for host discovery. We can also trace routes with Nmap. So tracing routes with Nmap from the scanning machine to the target host can provide valuable insight into the network topology. Nmap enables us to include trace route information during our scans. So for example, now we will enter the Nmap SN, Nmap SN, we will add the trace route option. So by using this option, we can trace the path taken by packets from our machine to the target host. Let's do this example here. So Nmap trace route, and here we will enter our some website. In this case, it's going to be, for example, code Sully. This is our application, which we, our website, uh, which we installed for penetration testing in, in this uh, course here. And as you can see here, trace route has to be run as a root. And we will use this sudo here. And after that, and as you can see here, here we, this is our trace route. So this command initiates a ping scan with a trace route enabled for both the Codesally and our host machine. So we can also add another here, for example, google.com. And here, that's it. So uh, we are allowing us to visualize the network path and identify potential bottlenecks or routing UGS here. As you can see, we don't have the, any UG on routing here. So segment three, leveraging NSA scripts during host discovery. Nmap's uh, scripting capabilities uh, through the Nmap scripting engine NSE here provide a powerful way to gather additional information about a target during the host discovery phase. By executing the N Nmap scripting engine scripts, we can uh, extract valuable insights about the target services, vulnerabilities, or even perform specific tasks. To execute 
nmap scripting engine script without conducting a port scanning we can use the sn option to skip port scanning and specify the desired script using the uh, script option so here what we're gonna do is nmap script here and we will use the dns dns uh, brute as a uh, nmap scripting engine so dns brute here and after that we will enter our target domain or ip address so in this case it's going to be code silly here dot com and here we will wait the execution here let's actually run with the pseudo privileges And here, as you can see here, we got no target specified and so zero host scan. And here, if you are getting this error, you can also use the alternative script for this year. So instead of writing DNS brute here, you can also write the DNS nsecure and enum. And after that, you enter the your domain or IP address so here this is an alternative and this script performs a dns enumeration by querying for nsec records which can uh, provide valuable information about the domain and here now we will get an output here And also uh, keep in mind that the success of this command depends on the availability of this uh, DNS insect enum script on your network configuration and you may need to uh, install additional nmap scripting engine scripts or adjust the command according to your specific environment. So if you need any assistance if you, or if you encounter any errors feel free to uh, ask me on the question sections of our course and as you can see here we got a lot of information here we got ports and this here so here uh, in this comment we are executing this dns nsec enum script during host discovery which attempts to brute force dns records for the codesally.com domain this can reveal hidden subdomains but also provide valuable information uh, here uh, and as you can see open ports and so on so we can also use the sn here before the script here and let's see how uh, the port will change and as you can see here uh, this is now we are not scanning port since this parameter will not scan uh, port here and here we are sending this host record server here and as you can see here our hosting for this domain contains this domain address here and which is this is the ip address of this and one interesting uh, nmap scripting engine script available in nmap is broadcast ping script which utilizes a broadcast ping request to identify online host uh, within a network by broadcasting a ping message nmap can detect hosts uh, that respond even if they have a restrictive firewall rules and to use this script we specify it with this script option as we did earlier along with the desired target uh, range so we will do nmap sn here script again with q here script and after that we will enter the broadcast ping and 192168 uh, let's actually see our if config ip local ip address 13 uh, 138 13 1 here and after that we will enter the 24 and here nmap sn so we need to let's actually oops we had the error with this typo here broadcast and that's it and as you can see it's not running for lack of privileges so we need to run it with sudo here root privileges here and now 
you will see an output and here so with this command we are scanning the local network with the ip range uh, of this one slash 24 which uh, are we will we will scan this ip address from 0 to 256 here uh, using this broadcast ping and here this can be particularly useful in scenarios where a host might not respond to traditional ping requests here so in conclusion and map discovery capabilities provide a powerful arsenal for network reconnaissance by understanding the leverage techniques such as trace route nsa uh, nmap scripting engine scripting and specialized scripts like broadcast ping we can gain comprehensive insights into network environments identify active hosts and uncover potential vulnerabilities so equip yourself with the knowledge of nmaps host discovery features and embark on your network recon reconnaissance uh, journey with confidence hello my name is Stefan, and in this lecture you will learn how to discover open ports with nmap in the realm of network reconnaissance one of the most valuable task is to determine the port states of a target this process is commonly known as port scanning so nmap the versatile network scanning tool excels at this task so providing a valuable insights into the running services on a target so in this segment we will explore essential nmap options related to port scanning and learn how to effectively list open ports on a target segment one launching the default scan to initiate a default scan with nmap all you need to is the target information which can be an it ip address host name or even a network range so let's take a look at this example here so nmap code .com. So here, this command will initiate a scan on the target host codesali.com and provide detailed information about the open ports and their corresponding services. And here it is, the output here. And as you can see, Neutron 988 filtered TCP ports and so on. So you will also learn what this here. So in segment two, which in segment two, so you will understand the scan results here so the scan results generated by nmap offer a crucial information about the target host let me actually open the uh, gromit here and i will draw things on the screen to explain this better so here here we have alongside with the ipv4 and ipv6 addresses reverse dna names and latency details the results highlight the ports and their respective states and the port states are categorized like this here so in first year we have open open ports this this here in open here as you can see all of these ports are open here so with this we are indicating so the nmap is indicates that the service is actively listening for connections on the port open here and also we have the closed with this here um, nmap indicates to us that the probes were received but no service was detected on the port and we also have the filtered filter it so uh, this indicates that the probes reception couldn't be determined possibly due to the filtering mechanisms and we also have unfiltered so with this here imap indicates us that the probes were received but the state couldn't be established and we also have open filter it here uh, this means that indicates that the port appears to be either open or filtered but the state couldn't be determined and we also have uh, the closed filter here uh, which indicates that the port appears to be either closed or filtered but the state couldn't be determined and here we will also learn the 
how to customize uh, nmap scans so while the default scan provides a valuable information nmap offers a plethora of customization options so for instance uh, for instance uh, you can specify alternative dns server using the dns uh, servers option like this dns servers option to control dns and resolution during the scan for example this nmap dns servers here and we will enter the google dns here 1888 here and after that comma we will type and 8.8.94.4 uh, here and now we will do from codesily.com so by providing this uh, dns server nmap will utilize these servers for host name resolution and here furthermore nmap performs host discovery to determine if the target is online before conducting uh, port scanning and you can skip the host discovery step using the pn option here after nmap pn uppercase p and the uh, lowercase n here and here uh you you will see another result it might it might take here actually let me use the sudo here sudo enter password that's it and uh, here this uh, command will directly indicate initiate uh, port scanning without prior post discovery with uppercase p and lowercase n options here And here, Nmap employs various th scan techniques depending on the user's privileges. And the default scan can utilize a sy synchronized SEN stealth scan or TCP connect scan here. So these techniques ensure comprehensive port scanning while considering the user's privileges and network environment. So port scanning with Nmap unravels the network services running on a target enabling us to gain insights into potential vulnerabilities and secure our networks by understanding the scan results here uh, customizing the nmap scans and being aware of the underlying scan techniques so we can effectively explore open ports and their associated uh, services here and as you can see we are seeing services ftp smtp rs ftp domain http pop3 emap and so on so equip yourself with nmap sports scanning progress and unlock the sec secrets hidden within your network welcome back fellow network explorers my name is Taifun, and in this lecture we will delve into the fascinating world of nmap Port scanning. We will delve into advanced techniques that will help you uncover valuable information about target systems and services. So grab your virtual magnifying glass as we embark on this Nmap journey together. So Nmap offers a variety of port scanning techniques that cater to different scenarios. Understanding these techniques will empower you to choose the most appropriate method for your scanning needs. So by default, the privileged users enjoy the benefits of a SEN stealth attack synchronizing stealth attack so this technique utilizes raw packets to detect port states using a technique known as half open so on the other hand unprivileged users who lack the ability to create any raw packets uh, rely on the TCP scan technique so TCP connect scan technique actually so this method completes each TCP connection fully making it slower compared to SEN synchronizing stealth scans. So fine tuning our uh, Nmap scans to focus on specific port ranges is a valuable skill. It allows us to narrow down our search and optimize performance, especially when dealing with multiple targets. So you can specify port ranges in various ways using Nmap P option. Uh, here so for example you can use uh, comma separated lists uh, to scan multiple ports like 80 and 443 uh, like this here nmap p here and 80 443 and here we will enter the code silly.com and here we are now scanning only port 80 and port 
443 and as you can see here they are open at service uh, port 80 uses on the service called HTTPA and here for port 443 uses HTTPS and they both open alternatively you can define range uses using hyphens here so for example such as the you can write like p here um, and one two hundred and here we are telling nmap to scan ports from one to hundred on codesolid.com and as you can see here we the nmap showed us the open ports on the specific domain address nmap also provides the flexibility to target specific ports by protocol for instance you can uh, scan tcp port uh, 24 or 25 and udp port 53 on a target using this command here again p here and without space after p we enter the t here 25 and u here 53 and here uh, you will enter the target domain or IP address. In this case, it, it's domain here, codesolid.com. And here, let's press enter. And as you can see here, your port specifications are illegal example of proper port here. So we did something wrong here. And here, after that, oh, sorry, we need to add two dots here. Yes, that's it. And here your ports include U, but you don't have specified UDP scan with SU here. So you can also scan with this, but in this case, we just scan the TCP here uh, and here. And as you can see, it's filtered and it's a SMTP here. Uh, SMTP service is actually in, used for emails uh, and email communication. So here, uh, additionally, you can focus on ports associated with specific services using service names such as nmap p here and after p it actually let me clear that so nmap p here nmap p and after p you can enter with sp with space here so nmap p smtp here and you will enter a, a domain name or ip address here codesolid.com and uh, now uh, we have a segmentation fault here let's actually use it sudo here enter password and as you can see here we got segmentation fault again this fault is actually a bug on the nmaps this version here so uh, i think they will fix that in next versions but here you can also fix that by uh uninstalling the purging and then installing nmap again which we will do in next lectures how to fix that fault here so here um, now nmap here also provides um, the flexibility to uh, active uh, use the active network interface in order to however there may be instances when it fails to do so or when you need to select a specific interface for uh, network testing purposes so to ensure nmap scans using the desired network interface for example let's you see what is our network interface in this case it's the eth0 so here uh, to ensure any map scans using the desired network interface you can use the e argument followed by the interface name for example in order to do that you will enter the n map here uh, e here e, mm, argument and after that you will enter the eth0 in my case and here and after that you will enter the code uh, target name and here uh, in this case uh, our nmap this code here forces uh, nmap to use the eth0 for the scan and here as you can see here you can oh sorry so you can also use the press t to, to debugging or you can use a row case to uh, show the process here And here, as you can see here, it's still using that.
So it might take some time here. I know it's actually halfway down here, etc. Fifty nine percent here. And here our scan is complete with this preferred interface here. So and as you can see here, we uh, we ensure that uh, we are now using the ETH zero for in map interface for the scannings here and congratulations you learned some advanced techniques for port scanning with in map by understanding the differences between a privileged and unprivileged scans and scanning specific port ranges and selecting the ideal network interface interface at the end and you are now equipped to conduct precise and efficient network reconnaissance so remember responsible scanning is essential always ensure you have a proper authorizations and adhere to ethical guidelines lines when performing security assessments and so go forth explore the depths of your network and uncover the hidden treasures that await with nmap and i'm waiting you in the next lecture Welcome back, security enthusiasts. In this lecture, we will explore the powerful target specification options provided by Nmap. Understanding different target formats and scanning techniques will enable you to effectively scan IP addresses and host ranges. So let's dive into the world of Nmap target specification. First thing we're gonna learn is multiple host specification. The simplest way to specify a target is by directly listing the IP addresses or hosts you want to scan. You can specify multiple hosts by separating them with spaces, for example, nmap, nmap, uh, let's codesilly.com, and after that you can also enter the local IP address. Let me actually look at my local IP address, if config here, IP config, and here 13.138, 13.138, and so on. So here, uh, this command will scan the IP addresses of uh, Kotsali, or domain here, and uh, this local IP address here. And here, uh, we can also have octet range addressing and wildcards. So to simplify the specifying a range of hosts, you can use octet range addressing. It allows you to specify a range of IP addresses by using a hyphen between the starting and ending addresses for instance uh, to scan host of for example this here let's actually delete the domain for now we will use on the local host of this here so to scan the host of this here 192.168.13.1 and 192.168.13.1 three here and as you can see we will scan this right so you can instead of this you can use for example this ip address here the the only this ip address and after that you will enter the 168.13.1 here and after that turn your operator here the so minus operator and here you will enter the ip address you want to range from so if you want to uh, scan the ip addresses from one to 20 you can use this like this here and now in this case uh octet range intuition also support wildcards keep in mind enabling you to scan from uh from 0 to 255 with the expression like this here and here this is especially useful when you want to scan a subnet with large number of hosts and you can also exclude host from the scan here let's actually clear that so sometimes you might need to exclude specific hosts from your scan and nmap provides the exclude option for this purpose. It allows you to exclude one or more hosts from the range being scanned. So here's an example here, uh, nmap 192.168.1.1 one to 255 here and we will use the exclude here with two minus operator exclude and 192.168.1 point for example or oops actually our ip this is, is 13 and not one uh, and 13 
oops, sorry, here, 13 point, for example, let's exclude 13.3, right? And here, with this command, we are excluding the, excluding the 13.3 uh, from the range of this host being scanned. Alternative, alternatively, you can create a, an exclusion list uh, in a file using the exclude exclude file option uh, to simply list the IP addresses or host you want to exclude in the file, each separated by a new line. For example, uh, let's actually create a new file uh, in graphical user interface here. Create document and my exclude list.txt here. And after that, you will open that. So, of course, we need to use it some notepad here. Ouch. Or uh, mousepad, I think. Here, mousepad. This is a text even program in Kali Linux. Here. So now, what we are going to do is we will write the IP addresses we want to exclude here. And here, so we will save this. And after that, what we are going to do is nmap exclude file here. Uh, and after that, you will enter the file path. Uh, you can also enter the file path using this home here, Kali, and exclude list.txt. And after that, you will enter the your IP address range you want to scan in this case from 1 to 255. Oops, sorry. Exclude file. I recognize option exclude file here. Let's actually try it without this here. And exclude file again, error here. So if you are getting this error, you're probably using the newer versions of this nmap here. <clears throat> so in order to fix that, we will use some grep and here. So however, you can achieve a similar result by using a combination of other tools and commands. Um, and as I said, one approach is to use grep command to filter out the IP addresses or host you want to exclude and then pass the filtered list to nmap. So let's actually appear here. So we will firstly, uh, as you remember, we will create it. We have created the file exclude list.txt. So let's actually read it. Cat exclude list.txt. And here, this is our this is our excluded. This is the IP address that we want to exclude from our scan. And we will using the grab command to exclude the IP addresses or host from the list you want to scan so you can use the v here let me actually do it again nmap v option to invert the match and select non-matching lines so here nmap f here and here we will exclude 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 list.txt and here we have all hosts.txt and after that we will enter the filter it filter it at txt here and previous sorry here we will use the sudo again if you are getting this kind of errors uh, probably the sudo will fix it no targets were specified and here fail to resolve exclude list like txt and i'll host that txt here and here we need to create the all hosts.txt in this case. And in order to do that, we will use the sec here, f192 here with the quote here, 192.168.8.13.g here, and we will unquote it. So one from one to 255 here, we will use this pipe, aw key here, and here we will print, Print it one by one, print zero here. 
and after that we will uncode it and we will write it to all hosts.txt here and now let's uh, cat the all hosts.txt to see what's inside and as you can see here this is all the hosts from 1 to 255 so what we're gonna do is we will run this command again in map command and as you can see we got the error again all hosts.txt one in no targets were specified and here so here we have the two files all hosts.txt and exclude list and we have the filter.txt here and here this is our output so here we also have the exclude list.txt and all hosts.txt and here sorry for the confusion here instead of using nmap we need to use the grep here so what we're gonna do is we will change the nmap to grep here grep and here that's it and now let's open the filter that takes actually we can use the cut with uh, we can open the filter that takes the with cat here and as you can see here we have excluded the ip address from our list and 20 2021 20, uh 20, 22 and 23 it doesn't exist because it already existed in filter so this is this is a filtered list that all the ports um that we want to scan so we will we have subtracted exclude uh, list from all hosts here so let's actually watch the exclude list here and as you can see we don't have the 23 here 22 here and we will also don't have the 112 here and as you can see here we don't also have the 112 here and so on so what we're gonna do is here and now we will use the nmap to scan all of this nmap uh, lowercase e here and uppercase l here uh, and we will pass the filter list to nmap for scanning and we will enter the filter.txt and here nmap is scans that and keep in mind that this method assumes you have a list of all the ip addresses or hosts you want to scan initially and a separate list of ip addresses or hosts you want to exclude address the comments accordingly to your to suit your specific requirements and please uh, keep in mind that the availability of uh, certain features or options in software tools may be changed since uh, the 2023 so this is the last version and updated version of this course and it's always good idea to um, you can also watch the documentation and official sources to make this nmap tool more usable and keep um, keep keep an eye onto the updates and we can also use this uh, cedr notation for targets so cedr notation uh, and as uh, actually this uh, cedr here also pronounced as the uh, cider uh, so this notation provides a compact method for specifying ip addresses and their routing suffixes it also pro uh, it allows for more granule subnet masks compared to classful addressing and cider notation consists of an ip address followed by a forward slash and a network prefix length the network prefix length represents the number of network bits and for example in cider notation uh, actually let me open the gromit here to write marker here so here the cider notation 24 after the ip address uh, this is the this means the subnet mask of 255 255 255.0 indicating that the first 24 bits of the ip address are the network portion and the remaining eight bits are for are for host addresses so to scan the 20 uh, 256 hosts in this range um from for example 0 to 255 you can use the cider notation uh after the ip address 24 here right so in order to do that we will do some example here so nmap 192 192.168.13.0 uh, and we will use the cider notation of 24 and 24 and as you can see here we will simplify scanning an entire subnet so we can also work with a targets list in nmap here uh, for example we uh, let's actually use create a new target list here let's open the 
create document here and target my target here that txt here and here we will open with it uh, with a mouse pad here and now we will enter some ip addresses in this case 192 192.168.113.138 2.168.13.2 and so on so we uh, in this case we will have two addresses for the scan and in order to do that let's actually use the cut targets here my targets that takes and as you can see we have two targets and in order to scan the, all of the IP, ad, uh, IP addresses in this list, we can use the, to, and also to load the targets from the, uh, to, to load, the, load the targets from the my targets that takes the file, you can use the nmap, nmap as we did in previous lecture, uh, in previous example, uh, lowercase e, uppercase l here, and my target that txt here. And this feature greatly simplifies scanning multiple hosts and in the target file you can also um, mix different target formats for, for instance you can also add here let's actually open the file here so 192.168.13.20 to 50 right so with this uh, you can also mix different ip addresses and ip ranges in uh, the same file remember uh, here you can add comments to your target list by starting a new line um, here with this character here this is really dangerous dangerous um, ip here and this allows you to annotate and organize your target files for better clarity and fantastic you learned the various target specification techniques in mmap and whatever new uh, whether you need to scan specific hosts, uh, define IP ranges, utilize side notation, or work with a target list. Nmap offers a versatile set of options to meet your scanning requirements. And I'm waiting you in next lecture and here. Hello, my name is Dave Boone. Welcome to the another awesome lecture of Nmap. Nmap is a versatile network scanning tool. It's widely recognized for its exceptional capability to not only detect the open ports, but also identify the operating systems and services running on remote hosts. So this recipe explores the process of fingerprinting operating systems and services using Nmap, providing valuable insights for security assessments vulnerability detection and network monitoring. Service detection is a crucial feature of Nmap that unveils detailed information about the specific software versions running on a target host. To enable service detection, include you can include the SV option in your port scan command. For example, Nmap Nmap SV and here you can enter the target uh, host here in this case let's actually scan the codesally.com and here uh, by employing this sv option nmap initiates service detection and augments the scan results with an additional column named version displaying the precise software version associated with each detected service and here now we are waiting for let's actually and as you can see uh, you can by using the row here row keys you can uh, see the process here and here let's actually learn my uh, so open my windows machine on my so I open my Windows machine on my uh, virtual machine here. Now what we can do is scan all the hosts to find that open here, lastly, and here. We'll also see that. And our scan is almost complete. It's 81% here. And here, our operating system detection is ended here. 
uh, on kotsali.com and here as you can see here we are seeing the domain here with ports and so on we have a uh, next uh, service fingerprint so when performing a port scan with a service detection enabled in mac in map furnishes an extensive report on the identified services so the service version information is enclosed in parentheses here red hat enterprise linux 6. so let's consider an example where we can we where it's kind of well known uh scan me in map that all costs here and let's, let's let's actually read this and here we are seeing some information here fingerprint uh, open ports and their versions their services light speed so on so this gives us a good insight on what this uh, hosting is using in this case for example xm smt smtpd 4.95 uh, in this case we can search exploits for this we can also search exploits for this in this case it's a red hat but um, in most cases it, it's actually pretty secure but uh, nothing in and nothing is unhackable so and here we have xm smtpd as well so here let's actually use the nmap scan me here let's clear and now nmap sv again actually if we use the sudo it will be much pretty good here nmap scan me dot nmap dot org here and oops nmap sv sudo we forgot to write nmap here nmap is this scan me org and here i'm oh, sorry here uh, we will see an output here which uh, the output showcases a comprehensive list of open ports along with their corresponding services and versions aiding in identifying potential vulnerabilities and monitoring software updates so here we are waiting for this it's actually and here as you can see 16 percent is done by now let's check it again as you can see it's 18.13 here so while scanning let's actually use another here so uh, we can also enable the operating system detection here so in addition to service detection nmap offers powerful operating system detection capabilities to activate oper operating system detection uh, you, you can include the uppercase o option in your scan command and keep in mind that running nmap with operating system detection uh, requires privileged uh, privileged user access in this case we will use the sudo here again and sudo nmap here and upper, uh, uppercase o and here we will write kotsali kotsali.com and then the kali here that's it And here our scanning is complete by now. You can see the server again, the services, and here we are. Emma provides a output here. Uh, all scan results may be unreal or unreliable, unreliable because we could not find at least one open and one closed port. And here aggressive operating system guesses is action tech. This here, we probably servers and uh, it's probably. So Windows in ninety seven present, Linux ninety four percent, ninety four percent, uh, and VMware player virtual map device. And here, so no, no exact operating system matches for host. So here we can also scan the our local host. So I have Windows ten machine on my network one three 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 here, and now we are going to scan this. So because of uh, the, our windows system so our target system in our, in our local host it will do 
much more fast and here as you can see here it's guessing microsoft windows 2019 which is microsoft windows 10 and here aggressive os guesses is uh, say they are the pretty same here but um, that's it so this is how operating system guessing works so uh, the actually let's actually i want to also tell you something let's actually uh, run it again so this uh, upon enabling the operating operating system detection nmap opens operating system related information at the bottom of the port list in the scan result as you can see here and here uh, nmap service detection uh, is facilitated by the sv option operates by dispatching a series of predefined probes for the nmap service probes file to the open ports detected during the scan so these uh, probes are selected based on their likelihood of identifying a specific service taking into account the port number and rarity score so service detection plays a crucial critical role in various scenarios such as vulnerability assessment service verification and the patch update assessment so similarly the operate minus o option here uh, empowers nmap's operating system detection features so it achieves this by sending probes to the tcp idp and icmp protocols against both open and closed ports so nmaps is, is vibrant user community community has co uh, contributed an extensive collection of fingerprints encompassing diverse systems including residential routers operating systems ip webcams and various hardware devices and it's important to note that um, operating system detection uh, necessi necessities raw packet manipulation requiring nmap to be executed in privileged mode so nmap adopts the common platform uh, common platform enumeration cpe naming scheme so widely embraced in the information security industry to accurately identify services and operating systems so this standardized convention facilitates uh, precise identification of uh, packages platforms and systems streamlining vulnerability assessment and risk analysis hello my name is stefan and in this lecture we will learn how to scan random targets on the internet nmap a powerful network scanning tool offers a fascinating feature that allows researchers to conduct scans against random targets on the internet although it's important to note that aggressive scanning without permission is not recommended and may be illegal in certain countries and generating a sample of random hosts can be valuable for research purposes related to publicly accessible hosts so let's explore how to generate random hosts as targets for nmap scans so to generate a list of n random uh, target hosts you can use this nmap command nmap lowercase e uppercase r here so we will do 20 here and now uh, here we are generating 20 random hosts so here let's actually wait and here uh, and here as you can see here we scanned randomly and there is zero host up so now let's delve into the prevalence of icmp internet Con control uh, message protocol on remote servers and we will launch a host discovery scan against three random targets so nmap sn so this is a host discovery and lowercase e uppercase r and we will do three here and here uh, the scan results will display information about a scanned host in this case there is a zero hosts up so let's actually make it 50 so we will have more chance to get uh, the online hosts here and here you can use the row keys to see the percentage of the process and here it's 9400 and as you can see here there's a three hosts up and here acumatetechnologies.com and so on so the scan results will display information about the scanned host such as their ip addresses responsiveness their domain if they have any and the latency and this is the sample sample output that nmap will give it to you and uh, let's actually learn how it works here right so by using the nmap 
lowercase e and uppercase r option followed by a some number here any map generates a specified number of external ip addresses and utilizes them as a targets in the scan so this target assignment can be combined with any other scan options as needed so while this feature can be valuable for internet research caution should be exercised when using it and nmap has no control over the external ip addresses it generates meaning that the generated list may include critical machines under heavy surveillance so keep in mind and uh, to avoid uh, to avoid any unintended consequences it's important to use this feature responsibly and ethically and there's also more here so if you want to generate a unlimited number of ip addresses and run the scan indefinitely you can use nmap lowercase e uppercase r here and zero option uh, for example if you're interested uh, here uh, in this case oh sorry no it's not zero so zero option and here we will scan it indefinitely until the ip addresses end or we have some error from program right and here uh, for example if you are interested in finding random online uh, nfs uh, here network file system shares you could so good this comment here nmap uh, first we will enter the port here so because nfs network file system uh, uses uh, 2049 port 2049 port and here we will use open and ir here so here uh, we will scan open uh, the online machines that uses this port and this port is open in that machine here so we will scan it on unlimited here and here as you can see here we have a like here as you can see here it's running all the way so here and there is also legal usage with port scanning here so it's essential to be aware of the legal implications surrounding port scanning engaging in port scanning without proper authorization is generally unwelcome and even illegal in certain jurisdictions and before conducting any scanning activities it's crucial to research and understand the laws and regulations in your local jurisdiction so nmap provides comprehensive documentation on the legal uses associated with uh, port scanning which can be found uh, on their uh, websites here let's actually go there so we will go nmap.org uh, here book and legal issues dot html so here i highly recommend that um anyone considering internet wide uh, scanning uh, takes the time to read and understand these resources here there is also as you can see here security list security tools here so there might be some error legal issues here so they might be changed this uh, link here so but here you can see if we also can google, uh, google it here we can also duck, uh, duck, duck, go it here and here nmap legal Usius, and here we will go to nmap's official website here and that's it so yes we need to use this here so that's it and as you can see here when used properly nmap helps protect your network from invaders and but when you use improperly nmap can in rare cases of course get you sued fired expelled jailed or banned by your internet service providers <laughs> so reduce your risk by reading this legal good before launching nmap here so there's a here as you can see there's a port scanning is not <laughs> crime and the strong opinions on a port scanning legality and uh morality and here as you can see here i love bmw their nice car here m3 i think yes and here you have you can read all of this chapter to understand the legal usages that comes with scanning ports here so i'm waiting you in next lecture Hello, my name is Stefan. Welcome to another awesome lecture. So in previous lecture, we mentioned what an address resolution protocol is. And in this lecture, we will look at it in more depth. So in the local network, communication takes place between devices using MAC addresses instead of IP addresses. So they are also called link at layer addresses. So ARP is a request response protocol, which means that one device requests the service and the other one replies in response to that request. So suppose that we two devices are present in a network with no external internet connectivity. Here, uh, actually, we had them 
we had diagram of this here so suppose we have we have two devices here which is the first device and johnny's device uh, with no internet external internet connector with him so for them to communicate with each other they need to rely on an underlying protocol which is known as the layer 2 protocol so we already briefly learned about arp tables so by using arp table device can maintain a list um, of all the devices on the network by using mapping of their ip and mac addresses so this is the this is the regular arp table would look like uh, here arp catch in first place arp catch mac address in second place and as you can see we have all the arp tables of so the typhoon's windows 11 has router's arp table and the router uh, here has typhoon's windows 11 arp tables here so this ARP table technique is quite old and was designed without security considerations in mind. So it has some inherent weaknesses that can be exploited, as we will see in later lectures. But first, let's start about learning about what ARP poisoning is. So before uh, before we learn start learning about ARP poisoning, uh, but let's firstly let's look at the ARP again. So ARP is a basically a program on a, on your internet that's installed on your PC that performs all tasks related to address resolution protocol automatically without needing to any input from the user. So to get an address from a machine, it plots F F F F like like lots of F six times two Fs here. Uh, I think here. So it puts this this amount of Fs which in irp here it means broadcast here so i want to show you something that we learned in previous lecture uh, let me actually open my kali and yes perfect so rem you remember this uh, example that we did in previous lecture here oops here so as you can see here we have lots of s so this f's mean broadcast in arp address resolution protocol so this ace means broadcast so let's go to our diagram again so we use that f's remember so here this f's as a broadcast address so we are sending this f's to everywhere and it does this to send to request to all the active devices in the network while asking the relevant question so uh, subsequently the intent intended device replies with an appropriate answer so let's look at this diagram here so now here we let's go to previous diagram that we drew in previous lectures and here uh, can you see it yeah perfect so our telephone device sends request and device join this device replies with an answer along with a mac address so looks pretty straightforward right so actually there's a design flaw in this protocol so when a joinist device uh, receive a request so if joinist device receive a request it has no way of knowing whether the information being provided by the requesting device is correct or not so in this way you can easily spoof the packets and now let's go to this example here and see what's changing here right so here actually let me make it this a bit down here so we can see in a zoomed mode can you see it clearly yes perfect and now let's consider the scenario here so let's say our telephone's device wants to communicate with an internet-based device as we already know it can't directly uh, connect to internet by self right it can't connect to internet by uh, by itself so it must go through the gateway first the router and then router connects to this right so the corresponding ip and mac addresses of the device are shown is here so uh, the Typhoon's Windows 11 and the Gateway maintain their own ARP tables. So for Typhoon's uh, Windows 11 to send a request to the external server, it will look inside its own ARP table, which is here. This is the Typhoon's 11 ARP table to find the MAC address of the Gateway device. And this is the 
uh, ARP table of this gateway device, right? So once it successfully finds the device's MAC address, and as you can see, it found it from here. This is the MAC address of our gateway device. This is information about our router. This is information about our computer. And this is the ARP table as written here. ARP cache IP, ARP cache MAC, ARP cache IP, and ARP cache MAC. So this here represents the step one in this diagram as we explained here. So if there's a only one device on the local network, the ARP table in the uh, Typhoon's Windows 11 will look something like that, right? So the ARP table in device of Typhoon's Windows 11 will look something like that. So now, the, since the gateway is a bridge between a local network and the internet, I will figure out the external IP address uh, for the packet. So then, using its own external or public IP address here, as you can see, we have public IP and private LAN IP here. So, but in Typhoon's Windows 11, it, it actually doesn't have a public IP uh, science. It has the same router one IP as the router one, right? So it will, they are sharing the same public IP here. So, uh, use, using its own external or public IP address, it will forward the request to the server located at 89.201.20.19 and this is the step two and the server here will process actual science we are completing this here we, we're gonna make this red and this means that we completed the steps here so here the step two actually instead of making it it will be much explanatory if we make it yellow and here, so this is the step two, right? So the server will process the request and reply to the router. So the server will process the request and reply to the router. And in this is the step three here. And the router will receive this reply and figure out where the external packet should go to. And how does it figure out where the packet should go? As you may have guessed, it will look at the destination address and destination port. Uh, using its own RP table, it will see where the respective device is located. And the ARP, the ARP table uh, in the router will look like this here. It knows our Typhoon's Windows 11 IP address and MAC address. So, and in the step four, the router will simply forward the reply to the in the intended recipients. So that's it. This is how our diagram works. So, so far we have learned how a normal request re or response works. And now here we will add an additional player called hacker or pen tester. So we learned about how ARP works in this following way. As we already know, devices keep connecting and disconnecting indefinitely. Another, and uh, here, uh, since the, they are keeping disconnecting and uh, connecting, the ARP program doesn't keep this IRP table uh, indefinitely, right? Another reason for this is the dynamic host control protocol, DHCP. DHCP, I think you have heard about this, right? So, DHCP. So, Another reason for this is that the dynamic host control protocol, this server, DHCP server, automatically assigns IP addresses to devices in a network. So when a device goes offline, the IP address becomes available again so that it can be assigned to a new connected device. So if our Typhoon's Windows 11 goes offline, uh, and this is the, you know, this is the, uh, IP address of Typhoon's Windows 11, it, it could be given to, like, uh, for example, uh, Jonathan's uh, Kali Linux or Jonathan's Ubuntu here, and it they could, uh, instead of using in the IP address of Typhoon's Windows 11, this 192.168.1.102 could be given to, like, Ubuntu system, uh, the Jonathan's Ubuntu system, and whatsoever. So, uh, and as, as I said, 
Uh, for this reason, devices in a network periodically send ARP responses to other devices in a network to let them know of their current IP and MAC addresses here. So this ensures that all the devices have an updated record of the IP and MAC addresses. And this is how it's done to make the less complications and uh, like uh, less like errors in the network here. So now when a device receives an ARP response, it just updates its ARP table without any authentication or validation. So you can see the problem here, right? So if a device creates an ARP response with a fake information and sends it over to a victim or target machine, the receiving device will update its ARP table with fake information without validating, uh, validating the correctness of the data. So another weakness in the ARP protocol is that it allows us to accept responses, even if uh, it didn't send a request, right? So now, Let's look at the another diagram here where I drew the how attackers uh, work and now I will explain all of this here right in this lecture. So I hope you're seeing more here. So now So here our the uh, so here we're going to we have attackers call Linux and Typhoon's Windows 11, right? So here attacker scala linux which belongs to the hacker will generate two fake arp address resolution protocol responses one for the victim and one for the gateway router so it will send an arp replay to the device of uh, this typhoon's windows 11 right and pretend to be a router so similarly it will send a reply to the router and pretend to be a device so now uh so it, it will simply like uh, as i said it will go to typhoon's windows 11 and say bro i am a router and it will go to router bro i'm a trust me i'm a uh, typhoon's window uh, typhoon's windows 11 right this is how it works <laughs> pretty liar right so here now both device Windows 11 and the router will update their ARP table with this new fake information. So now, if uh, Typhoon's device makes the uh, no, actually, if the Typhoon's device right will uh, makes the same request as it did in the previous case to the external server, instead of requesting going to the router, the request will go to the attacker. So the attacker can then choose to forward the request to the router and at this point the router will think the request is coming from the, the from device A and in reality the request is coming from our attacker scala Linux device, right? So uh, attacker scala Linux uh, device in fact intercepting all the network between the router and device. So this is how a uh, man in the middle attack type work and in next lecture we will create an example application with this here so i'm waiting you in the next lecture hello my name is Stephen, and in this lecture we will learn how to build an address resolution protocol spoof program so before we move on let's take a look at the arp tables again in both kali as well as the windows and you can see windows uh, arp table in the right Top corner of the screen here and i think yeah you can see it and here we will also check the arp a here you can see we have the here eth0 ether ether as well and this is our and some of this is incomplete but i think this 128 is wind belongs to windows so as you can see here uh, see here we have the correct mac addresses uh, for the router located at uh, 192.168.13.2 kali here is located at uh, 138 and sometimes you might not see own ip addresses in your rp packets but in sometimes you can see so it doesn't make any big difference here so don't worry about it so and uh, our windows 10 is located at 192.168.13.128 here and uh, we can see the ip address so we are this in the we are in the same network 
as windows 10 here so we can now close the just we will just close the windows but we will not turn it on or uh, turn it off here that's it to see fully here and now what we're gonna do is uh, we will start our project we can you can also open the uh, pie charm here and delete old project or you can create a new project from the file a new project here and that's it so uh, i suggest to use virtual environment but you can also use uh, this on your own python 3 uh, program here so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna import uh, some of the libraries actually let's import all of the libraries and uh, so while we are while we are coding our program the integrated development environment will suggest us what uh, the um, uh, the libraries and packages we want to import so now let's from scapy.all we will import all here but uh, here we will here uh, this asterisk actually means that we want to import all the models present in scape here so as we learned in the previous lectures uh, to spoof we have to create fake responses so first we will create a response intended for the victim and to do this we will create an arp packet and see what fields can be set in it so we, we will use the my arp response here and we will create a new arp class here as you can see we got an error because we will we have to import the scape layers l2 arp here so i think if i will uh, increase the size of the text a little bit you will see see better here and we will use the custom font 18 perfect so now what we're gonna do is after that we will print this arp response in this case this will not ask any root privileges so we can run it here and as you can see here arp who has 000, 000 says one uh, so it, as you can see it's 108 it ends with 138 and uh, do you remember it somewhere and as you can see it's our uh, it's our local uh, it's our linux machines uh, local ip address so and after that we will also use show and let's see what will change here and as you can see here we are seeing ethernet 10 megabit ip version 2 ip version uh, 4 and we are seeing our ip address uh, and mac address here so now the output would, would, would look like this and we can also check this on uh, here terminal and uh, python python tree main python tree main dot pi here oops and as you can see here we are seeing all of the information that we uh, that the the arp provides us address resolution protocol provides us so the uh, the fields that we are interested in start from op here op here so uh op stands for operation or type of packet so this is here who has operation which means that the, it it is an ARP request, address resolution protocol request. So, but we are interested in creating an ARP response instead. So, which is HWSRC here. So, uh, now uh, HWSRC, and uh, we also had HWDST and BWDST, as you can see from DST, uh, haven't been set for this packet yet. So, now we will make the modifications in this packet in order to spoof the uh, victim so actually let me get my pen here okay so we will change the op to two right oops sorry we will change the op to two and actually let me yes we will change the op to two implying that this is a response here and not a request so uh, and by default this value is one which means it corresponds to the who has so the one is who has and two is just a response and not a request and we will also change the psrc here you can see here we will change the psrc address field to make it equal to the value of the ip address of the router since our router is located at uh, here remember this actually let me open the new tab new tab and if config 
and here our router is located at here actually let me uh, write the ARP a here and as you can see our router is located at here and we will set this field to the value and lastly we will set pdst so we will set the pdst to the ip address of the victim's machine so which is in this case in our is our windows machine and our windows machine has an ip uh, address of one two eight so we will uh, also set the hwdst address which is the victim's mac address and here this is the victim's mac address here so we can see it freely right and now uh, here in next lecture you will also write the code for it in this lecture we actually introduced what we will do to create our project actually this is not a quite simple project that we did in earlier lectures but this will be like so bigger so much bigger than the previous projects here so i'm waiting you in next lecture hello my name is dave Bonan. and in this lecture we will learn how to build an arp spoof program address resolution protocol spoof program so before we move on let's take a look at the arp tables again in both kali as well as the windows so let's First, they get look at those tables in Windows here. I will open the screen now. Okay, perfect. And as you can see here, we are seeing our other resolution protocol here. Uh, let's actually write ARPA, and that's it. Here, as you can see here, we have use physical addresses and internet addresses here. And here, we will also check that in linux we can actually we will actually we will not turn off the windows operating system but however we'll just close the screen right now but uh, actually windows operating system is running now in uh, here and now we will go to our cal linux operating system and we will change uh, check the arp a and as you can see here the ARP table in Linux and Windows looks like this. And as you can see here, they have the correct MAC addresses for the router located at it's actually here. As you can see, they have the all the addresses located at 192.168.13.2. So as you can see, you you can see it on the Windows operating system as well with the same MAC address. So this is our router and here this is our i think let me if config if config and this is our kali linux operating system attacker system in um, reality it's uh, ip address and also we have the ether we have the mac address of it and this 128 is windows 10 operating system which is the victim uh, here target machine and now to spoof these devices we will take on this problem step by step so first we will tackle spoofing the victim machine with the mac address of the router so the, which is this is the ip address of the router and this is the mac address of the router so now we're going to open the pycharm here or whatever your internet integrated development environment is uh, in this case it's pycharm i think it's uh, one of the best IDS for Python. And now we're going to import scapy all and import everything. So this asterisk here means that uh, we want to import all the models present in scapy. As we learned in the previous lectures, to spoof, we have to create a fake responses. First, we will create a response intended for the victim. And to do this, we will create an my arp packet packet and we'll make it arp class and after that we'll go to we'll print this here so arp response my arp packet and after that or actually this instead of writing this my arp response it will be more logical to write like that uh, so as, as well as we will write this arp response and let's run this and see what will happen as you can see arp who has 
0 .0 .0 .0 says this, which is in this case, it's the attacker IP address, right? And now uh, the out output, of course, is going to be look like this. And we can also check it from the terminal. And as you can see, we got the same result as we did here. And the fields that are we are interested, we have to get more detailed information. And in order to get that, we're going to use the show method. And we have a problem here because we need to import the scape layers here. And now it's everything. And as you can see here, we are interested from OP here in these five addresses. So OP stands for the operation or type of packet. Let me check actually if you can see it. Yes, we can actually turn. Yes, close the windows. But it's actually, as I said, in reality, it's actually running in the background. You're just seeing the Kali Linux here. And now the OP stands for operation or type of packet so the who has here operation uh this is a who has operation which means that the it is an arp request address resolution protocol request but we are interested in creating an address resolution protocol response instead so here also we are have the so we're gonna change this remember we, uh, this has to be changed and we also have hw src uh, this is the is the mac address of the Kali machine we can check this by writing if config to verify it and as you can see we this is the same mac addresses and also similarly psrc is the ip address of our Kali machine so hwdst and pdst haven't been set for this packet yet but now we will make this modifications here so now we're going to go to again to python uh, pychar and we, we will create following we will write following codes here so my arp so we will manipulate and edit this arp response here so we'll set it to two and i will explain all of these codes right now and pdst is going to be we will write the windows ip for that so now let's check oh sorry i opened browser accidentally so we can close it and we will gonna check the windows ip this is the windows ip address and the windows mac address and we're gonna go to pycharm again and we will write the windows ip and we will notify the for example the next programmer to and we will add a comment that uh, the this is a target target machine and windows 10 and we also have need to uh, set the windows mac address so may my arp response dot hwdst and here we will add copy this here Copy this here, perfect, and we'll paste this. Oh, sorry, not this. So we will paste this right now here. Yeah. And as you can see, this is the target, target machine Windows 10 Mac address here. And this is the IP, IP address. That's it. And after that, we will also use the, we will also need to edit the my Kali uh, Mac. So we will enter this hwsrc and this is going to be our Kali attacker machine MAC address and this is here right now right here we'll also copy that to it and attacker machine and this is the Kali MAC address and we will also need to set some fake field value ARP response my ARP response dot psrc and we will set one let's actually set the router here yes yeah and here we have only crafted the last field uh, and we will be sending it from the we can also make a tree here so we will be sending it from this target machine or attacker machine 
uh, while pretending to be like Windows 10, right? So once all fields have been set, you can print them to see if they have defined correctly. Now we know what we're gonna do is we're gonna delete this print here. Actually, let's copy, it, cut, uh, cut it here from here and paste it right after this manipulation pro, uh, phase here. And as you can see, this is the output here. We can also check it and verify it from the terminal. We will run clear the console and run it again here. And as you can see here, this is our output. And as you can see here, our OP is changed, right? So, so this is the output you're gonna see here. But uh, remember, uh, this IP address will be different on you, and you need to change this. IP addresses according to your network or MAC addresses here. So now let's check this here. And so they are the two different physical addresses here. And now what we're going to do is we'll go back to Linux here and uh, test this here. And we will also add while loop here. So we go to back to Linux. We will add the while loop here. So while true here while true so this will this code will run continuously and that's it so after that we will go back to here and clear the screen and run it again so sudo python3 main.py here and as you can see our loop is working and looping here and now what we're going to do is we will go to windows and here as you can see here use and we will go to arpa here and as you can see here we have the two same physical addresses here so now uh, when you run this program and uh, uh, whenever if you are not using loop here so you can go uh, if you are not using loop you can quickly go to windows machine before the arp table gets reset and you will see that the arp table of the windows machine has been poisoned and that is the arp table entry shows the wrong mac address of for the for this gateway and instead of pointing the actual gateway it now points to kali's mac address so now let's go to uh, kali here and check actually we can now stop it and now we will go to kali here and we will use the if config here and our mac address is exactly the same as the windows one as you can see here kali mac address is now matched to so they now share the two same mac addresses in our network local network here so this is how arp poisoning works here so i'm waiting you in next lecture
Hello, my name is Tayfun, and in this lecture, we will write a program for the attacker server uh, or the pen tester server that our pen testers will use that server here. That program, as you learned in previous lecture, we need two programs uh, for the remote access Trojan uh, for the server and client side. So now let's uh, go to our Kali machine environment and as we've done, uh, we will not require any external libraries in this lecture, but it's always a good idea to use virtual environments uh, to keep track of the dependencies on our program. Also, uh, you will also now create a new file, or actually, let's create a yeah, new file named. Actually, we can also delete this main.python file and delete this from here. We will so it here and now we're gonna right click on the project folder and click on the python file new python file and now we're gonna write the science we're gonna create the server side of the application in this lecture we will write server rat and that's it and here uh, the let's actually let's actually check our ip address of the kali machine so if config and as you can see this is the ip address of our color machine uh, and uh, for the victims ip address we're gonna check uh, actually let me check if this windows is opened here it's opened let me actually go with you uh, this is the windows here it's opened and active so for now we were just gonna hide it now we'll go back to kali linux and here what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the ip address of windows machine without even touching it so now we're gonna use the nmap uh, to define what device uh, in our local network uh, uses the operating system in order to do that we will enter first the 192.168.13 13 and 1 after that we will add 24 to just scan 255 ip addresses and press enter and keep in mind that this is not zero or lowercase o this is uppercase o here as a parameter and as you can see here this cpip fingerprinting for operating system scan requires root privileges and now we will use the sudo to run it so kali and also we will open the notepad here uh now or i think it was a mouse pad yes and here we will write the kali or attacker or actually pen tester is more appropriate term for this example and here we will write 192.168.13 and here we have the 13 point I think it was yeah 138 and after that we also let's actually also add the uh, operating system uh, which is kali linux 2023 and also after that we will add the target machine target or yeah target here and target here we will after this in map scan let's go back to it and here as you can see we are seeing all the devices in our network here this is vmware uh, and we have the this ip address here and as you can see here we have the nmap scan for 139 and we have this is the router uh, of our local network and here this is our windows machine and as you can see here it might say uh, windows um, microsoft windows xp uh, that's the old version of it but here as you can see here it's written uh, 2019 uh, or, or might be this windows server 2019 so uh, actually this is just a guess so nmap as you can see it's also written the uh, just guessing here uh, so we now we know that this target machine runs on windows uh, probably windows 10 and 
and as you can see here microsoft windows server 2019 and windows uh, microsoft server, server 2019 is actually windows 10 we can check it out from here uh, ms server windows or 2019 here and we will check uh, how it looks like it's uh, yes i think yeah it's windows 10 uh, based on windows 10 but it was a server version of it so we know that it is windows 10 and now we will also add the ip address of our attack target machine 192.168.13 and 139 and that's it and here windows 10 here and after that what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to PyCharm here. We'll close that. Because actually, we, it might be good to put some space on the left side of the screen here. Now, the IP address of our Kali machine is this. Um, and for the victims or targets Windows machine is this. So next, we need to select which port we will be listening on for incoming connections. So as you learned in previous lectures we need ports right so we need to select ports so you can select any port above 1024 uh, or you can you can select any port we will add this here as a comments any port on or any port above than above 1024 and less than 65,300 65, uh, actually let's actually check the maximum number of ports here uh, maximum number of ports maximum max number of ports in tcp ip and here we will get the answer of 65,535, right? 665,535. And here, uh, let's actually, we will use the port number 9,877. And yeah, you can also choose whenever you port, uh, whenever you like, or whatever number you like here. But in most conditions, uh, you need to choose the like most suspicious, less suspicious port number. For example, one three three seven is mostly used for, or one three three nine is mostly used for uh, remote access Trojan programs. So you can also choose some eight eighty to like <laughs> make it less suspicious. But you can choose, as I said, you can select any port above 1024 and, and the less than uh, 65,535. 65, and uh, now we're going to write our program. So as I said, we will use, um, we, can, we will use 8,788. So uh, we will firstly import the socket here. Um, and after that we will create the socket object here so actually we will also need to use the if name to run our program here and after that we will use the main so here actually you learned in previous lecture where we are writing this and after that we're gonna use the hacker server socket here and after that socket socket that remember you learned all of the, all, uh, almost all of the methods that we're going to use in previous lectures i think it was a 18 minute lecture so it was a pretty long so socket so first we're going to circuit uh, af init so this is the ip address here so get init uh, so you will know why are we writing this init here and after that we will also input as a parameter of socket kind in this case socket dot soc stream uh, here stream that's it and here on the 
first line we are simply importing the socket uh, model from the python standard library stl and next we are creating a socket object so uh, the two parameters uh, socket dot af init and socket soc stream uh, so let's see what they are mean right what they mean so remember that we talk about the ipv ip i p oh sorry i p version four and i p version six right you remember that and so this is exactly what the socket a f in it and socket soc stream uh, means so if you want to use ipv6 which you probably won't uh, you will in that case uh, you will use init 6 here and as you can see init and init 6 so init 6 is ip version 6 and init is just a regular ip version 4 so remember that this here uh, actually let's run if config here i will show you again and as you can see this is our ip version 6 address of our local here and this is the ip version 4 address so we're gonna use ip version 4 and uh, here next uh, here we need to define what protocol layer we want to use so here we have options for either tcp or udp socket so in our examples we want to use reliable connection so we will use tcp and uh, so soc stream means that we are creating a tcp socket here so if you want to create a udp socket you can also which again you probably won't uh, for the most part you can use the uh, socket that soc stream here as you can see we have soc uh, soc tgram and soc stream so we're going to use soc uh, here soc stream here but if you want to use the udp you can select that soc uh, soc dgram so we will use soc stream here sorry soc stream perfect so this is the tcp and ipv4 tcp here and next uh, we will bind this server to the callus ip address on remember let's remember the port so here port port here so port so we will bind this to our ip address as i said attacker ip and we're gonna enter the attacker ip here and as you can see here we enter the attacker ip in the strings of course and after that we will enter the port so of course we will not use the different ports uh, for the uh, for attacker and server side so we will just use the one port for each side so think of ports like doors here like uh, doors in hotel right you need to use same doors to meet some person on the uh, hotel right so that's that is how the ports work on a tcp ip model and also uh, we will use the socket address so socket my socket address here we will pass two arguments ip and port uh, so oops uh, attacker ip and uh, attacker oops actually sorry for that we here we have as you can see hack uh, we have hacker server socket here and now what we're gonna do is we will create the two here socket my socket address it's gonna attacker ip and attacker port so port attacker port so as i said sorry for this i can attacker port uh, there's no attacker port and no victim port there is a same port so they are using same port but different ips here so this is how internet works so also keep in mind that you have to give the ip address and port here in tuple so this is we created tuple here uh from the to the socket point here uh, so you need tuple as i said and here we will enter the 
hacker server socket that bind we will bind this uh, ma my socket to here and what we're gonna do is here we'll pass this my socket address and after that and we need to listen for incoming connections on the specified socket with the help of this command uh, which is hacker socket that listen and five uh, as you remember this is the second here so now that our program configuration is almost complete we can start listening for incoming connection request which we will do in next lecture so i'm waiting your next lecture here hello my name is stefan and in this lecture we will be creating a simple server application using python circuits and i will with you through the code step by step and explaining each line and function along the way so by the end of this lecture you will have a clear understanding of how to create a basic server using python so let's start by writing the server application here so as i remember in previous lecture we had did this here so we added uh first we created the set the attackers ip addresses and the port numbers to the list and actually this is the uh kind of the ip address that we've been waiting the request re or response from so we will changing to 0, 0.0.0, .0, .0 and because in this case for example we have this amount of computers in the network and they all have the specific ip addresses so these are the computers and this is the attacker computer here and here by typing the specific ip address this means that we are waiting the response from specific ip address here specific computer and uh, and actually that's not a good solution for uh, remote remote access trojans in most cases because we will want clients from every ip addresses and that's why we're going to write 0.0.0, .0 to wait all the uh, clients from every ip addresses here and after that we will have the port here and uh, ip to listen here and we will change also here ip to listen that's it and after that here uh, remember we create a socket object for the server uh, here i'm oh, sorry we create, we create a socket object for the server and after that uh, here we as you as you can see here my socket address ip to listen port so this is a tuple uh, we will uh, define the server address and ip uh, here and after that we bind the socket uh, in this case my socket address variable to the server address yes you remember we have used the socket af in it which is ip version 4 and tcp here uh, we use tcp protocol and after that here we uh, listen for incoming connections and we here allowed five queued connections here and after that uh, let's actually use the print here to show the user in this case the only user that uh, the server is gonna run on it it's gonna be v and so this is a the server is actually the attacker application and here we will print here so listening for all incoming incoming client client connection here and here i want to mention that we are printing message for uh like listening for all the we are notifying the user that we are listening for all the client connections here and after that we will accept a client connection so in order to do that we will use client socket uh, in this case it's going to be yeah client socket socket and we will also add a client address client address here and we will make it equal to server uh, socket here in this case this our server socket is hacker server socket hacker server socket that accept here that's it and here we will print the client's address to confirm the connection and in order to do that we will print 
print here and we will print that we are connected to client client here and we will print the client address so you can also do this with formatting here uh, in order to do that we will use this and here we will just add f here before the quotes here double quotes and after that we will uh, receive the uh, print message from the client uh, so we will uh, so the client will send us some message here and we will receive uh, and print that message to the user and here Uh, while we will work this this loop will run until we press the control c or terminate the program somehow we will create a new value here which is data so client socket that receive here receive and we will write 1024 and we will also decode that so here of uh, data here so here uh, we will receive the data from the client uh, in this case we are we have a condition that uh, we want to receive that data up to 1024 bytes and decode it from bytes to string so remember in previous lectures i explained that uh, if you want to send some message uh, to the over the network you need to first turn it to bytes and when you're receiving it you need to turn it bytes to string right and here uh, we will also add if condition here so if not data is no data is received it means that the client has closed the connection so we break out of the loop here so if not data not data uh, we will just break here that's it and after that uh, we will after breaking the loop uh, here we will print the received received message or uh, just write a message from client here and after that we will enter the data so we're gonna use the here data that's it and we will also use format perfect and after that of course we need to after using the circuit we need to close the circuit we will use close client circuit that close here and after that we will server circuit token server here token server or we i think we have the client circuit client address and we have hacker server circuit hacker server circuit that close as well and this is a client socket and this is the server socket here and now we're gonna run this program here to say everything is okay and as you can see here we are waiting for the response here and now we're gonna run this program on terminal sudo python3 we might get an error because we are running the program twice on the same port but we are still listening here and we will test it out here server rat and as you can see here address is already in use and we will stop this here and here as you can see uh science they're closing this as well and here and as you can see here we are listening from the terminal here actually they're quite the same thing here in this case but uh here as you can see here we are listening from terminal so I'm waiting you in next lecture for developing the client application. So this was the server side. Hello, my name is Steve Hoon. Welcome to today's lecture on developing a remote access Trojan for educational purposes. In this lecture series, we will explore the fundamentals of creating a rat using Python. And today we will focus on the server side implementation of it. So a remote access Trojan is a powerful tool that allows authorized on naturalized users to remotely access and control computers over a network it can be used for various purposes such as penetration testing network administration and remote 
troubleshooting. So, however, it's important to approach its development and usage responsibly and ethically. And in this lecture, we will dive into the server-side uh, code of our remote access Trojan, and we will establish a network connection between a server and client, allowing us to send commands from the server to the client machine and receive the outputs back to the server's terminal. We will, we will then walk through each line of code, discussing its purpose and functionality. So by the end of this lecture, you will have a solid understanding of the server implementation, server-side implementation of our remote access Trojan and how it enables remote command execution. In this lecture, we will continue our journey by developing the client-side code, completing our remote access Trojan implementations. So remember, the purpose of this lecture series is educational, emphasizing responsible and ethical use of such tools, and it's essential to respect the legal boundaries and obtain proper authorization before conducting any activities related to hacking, penetration testing, or network security. So let's get started with our exploration of remote access Trojan development, starting with the server side code here. And together we will learn how to create a functional remote access Trojan that can execute commands remotely and receive outputs in the server's terminal. So uh, feel free to customize this code here. And for this lecture purposes here, we will delete this code. Uh, actually, we will write the same code to the previous lectures uh, for the messaging application but it will for some uh, here it might be watching from all over the uh, lectures again for this section and that's why we're gonna delete the codes here and we will write them again for educational purposes here so we will explain this again and more depth here and now what we're gonna do is we will write firstly import the socket here import socket so here we will also if name uh, again if name here do we call to science and again main here and after that we will create a circuit object for the server in order to do that so we will again use the same variable hacker server socket here and socket that uh, socket that socket that's it again uh, socket socket that af init for tcp ip version 4 and also we will also use the socket that uh, soc stream in order to use the tcp protocol and after that we will need to define the ip address and port to listen on we will use ip to listen it's going to be 0.0.0.0, .0, .0. it's listen all available network interfaces and the port is going to be again the same port 87 so 88 here so uh, port here port 8788 so here we will need to bind the socket to the ip address and port so we will create a new tuple my uh, socket address here and we will create the uh, first we will pass the ip to listen and then uh, port here and after that we will also uh, bind this uh, variable tuple here with this bind uh, method uh, my socket address and after that we will need to listen for incoming client connections so we here we will set the client con maximum client connections or client queue for five but uh, listen here and after that we will print to the user that we are uh, listening to all uh, incoming client connections so listening listening to or listening for all incoming client connections here and that's it and after that we will need to if there's a client connection we need to accept the client connection when it arrives uh, so in order to do that we will use the client uh, socket and uh, here uh, client address client address here and we will equal to hacker server that accept and after that we will uh, print the uh, client ip address and port uh, to, and we will know that what uh, the client and port we are working on so connected connected to or actual new connection and here we will write the client uh, client address oops uh, actually it was a yeah it was client address and client 
Yeah, it was a client address and client socket. Yeah, actually, it's right. The only client address only. So we know uh, the port already, or we can also do this port. That's it. So here we will write the client address and port like this. And after that, uh, we will need to write a while rule. So while true, uh, we will write the prompt the server operator to enter a command to execute on the client. In this case, the server operator is uh, v, uh, is uh, are we and so now we will the command here so command and we will input some commands here uh, and we will notify that enter command to execute on client here and here or or pipe exit or exit you quit here and after that we will send the command to the client uh, we will client here mm, client socket dot send and command that encode here actually instead of writing the plural we can just use the command here instead of commands and we will uh, here uh, we will check if the server operator wants to exit here in order to do that we will just turn the command to lower because uh, the server operator meant write exit like this exit like that or uh, with uppercase e here and then down uh, lowercase xit here and that's why we will turn it the command to lowercase to check the proper here and exit that's it and after that we will break the loop here if this condition occurs here so now we will need to receive the response from the client. So response, response here, uh, client socket. We will not that use that response here, but in for next lectures we will need that uh, here. Decode. We will also need to decode here if there's any response arrive. And after that we need to print the output from the client uh, on the server terminal. So print here. And we will use the format so output output put from client client command line and here after that we're gonna use a new line and after that we will print the response so here uh, since we completed our application uh, now we will close the client and server sockets client socket dot close here and server socket dot close that's it close here now that's actually run uh, current well and as you can see it's listening for all incoming connections so if there's a connections arrived now we will enter some comments here in this case it will be nothing because there's a no connection into our uh, machine here so now I will explain all of the quotes here. Uh, it will take uh, it will not take a long here. So firstly, we imported the socket. We will uh, with this code we import uh, the socket model, which provides low-level network functionality. Here, we, as you remember, we are with this if name equals equals main. We are checking if the script is being run directly and not imported as a module. And here, as I explained in previous lectures. This hacker server socket variable, we are creating the this uh, socket EF init here to create a, uh, creates a IP version 4 and uh, this creates a, a TCP socket object for the server and we are here specifying the IP address to listen on using this 0.0.0.0, .0 means that the server will listen on all available network interfaces this is the port we are specifying the port to listen on you can change this to any available port number and here we are my socket address uh, we are here combining the ip address and the port here ip address variable and port variable into a tuple to bind the socket and here we are uh with this code we are binding the socket to specify the ip and port and here 
uh, we are enabling the server to listen for incoming client connections and the five parameter that we wrote here specifies that the maximum number of queued connections and after that so we are printing here and after that we are accepting a client connection when it arrives and returning a new socket object for communication with the client and client's address and after that we are we, as you can see here we have the command input so we are printing just here and so after that we are uh, inside the while loop uh, with this here, uh, we are prompt, uh, prompting the server operator, in this case us, uh, to enter a command to execute on the client. And after that, uh, here, client circuit.send command encode here, uh, sends the command to the client after encoding into bytes. And after that, if uh, this line of code here checks if the server operator wants to exit, if so, it breaks out of the loop. And here on the response here, uh, we are receiving the response from the client and the 1024 parameter specifies the maximum number of bytes to receive. And here we are pr printing the output from the client uh, uh, on the server's terminal. And here we are closing the socket for the client connection and we are closing the socket for server socket. So this code here covers the server side code ex explanation it sets up the server to listen for the client connections prompts the operator for commands to send to the client and prints the output received from the client so in next lecture we will also develop a client side of the application here so i'm waiting you in next lecture Hello, my name is Steve Pond. Welcome to our Remote Access Trojan Development Lecture Series. And in previous lecture, we explored the server-side implementation of our Remote Access Trojan, which allowed us to send commands uh, to a connected client and receive the outputs in the server's terminal. However, we have just a few little errors here because the one of this here in the client socket, uh, I hope you noticed it when we wrote that code in previous lecture. The, the thing is we need to firstly receive and decode here right so receive uh, 1024 and after that we will need to decode and here we just forgot here in the, our keyboard to write the parentheses after the encode here so that's it our program run, will run successful again so actually in previous lecture our program ran successful right do Rem you remember that but our program actually when i they try it our program got crashed when we tried to uh, connect with the client so in this lecture we will also develop a client so in this lecture we will complete our uh, remote access trojan implementation by developing the client side code and the client will establish a connection with the server listen for comments execute them on the client machine and send the outputs back to the server Throughout this lecture, we will uh, dissect the client-side code line by line and understand its functionality here. And we will cover concepts such as socket creations, connecting to the server, receiving commands, executing shell commands using the sub-process uh, here, sub-process um, module, and sending the outputs back to the server so by the end of this lecture you will have a complete understanding of how remote access trojan works uh, from both uh, the server and client perspectives and you will be equipped with the knowledge to build a functional remote access trojan that allows a remote command execution and output retrieval and remember this lecture series focuses on educational purposes only emphasizing responsible and ethical use of such tools I always ensure you have a proper authorization before conducting any activities related to hacking penetration testing or network security so let's dive into the client side code and learn how to develop the essential functionalities of our remote access trojan together we will take another step towards mastering remote access trojan malware development and if you feel free to customize and adapt this script to your uh, lecture uh, style and objectives and i hope um, this in this lecture you will learn about all the things about client uh, development here so let's get started firstly we will import the sockets here 
so here we will firstly import the socket and after that we will also import the sub process as you remember here so we will execute commands in the client operating system with the sub process libraries modules here and we will also add if uh, name name here and here main and after that we will define the server ip and port to connect to in this case here attacker uh, ip here is going to be one uh, one nine two uh, attacker ip is going to be our cal ip address here so if config here and you will see this ip address here let's actually use this again so if config and here 138 so we can copy this or here 168 13.138 and that's it so after that we will also need to use the same port attacker port uh, here port in this case our attacker port was the 8788 uh, so 8788 here also add the two dots here that's it and here give name main here and that's it so here we got also the problem here because we already did use this so sometimes it's actually invalid and restart sometimes it might happen like this here that's it and now what we're gonna do is here and now what we're gonna do is we will also create a target address so or uh, here we will we will do the attacker address here it's gonna be the server ip oops it's going to be attacker ip and attacker port and after that we need to create a socket object for the client in this case we will the client uh, socket here it's going to be socket dot socket here and we will use the ip version 4 and socket dot af init socket dot uh, soc stream here and after that we need to connect to the server and in order to do that we will use a client circuit again and client circuit dot connect and we will pass the target address as a tuple target oops uh, not target uh, attacker address here and after that we will uh, notify to the client actually we don't need to but for this uh, lecture purposes we want to uh, see what is going on on the client machine so we will print that uh, here of course with the format client is connected to and we will also write the uh, the attacker IP, attacker address or attacker ip and attacker attacker port that's it and after that we are done we need to go to while loop here while true here and we need to receive the command from the server Comment. I will explain all of the codes more in more detail than after writing this. Comment here and here. Client socket that receive here, and we will enter the how many bytes we even a buffer size, and we will also decode it. And after that, uh, if our client wanna exit, so if the command was to exit from the server, if our command here that lower is here, exit then uh, it's gonna be exit we will break the loop and stop the program that's it and here and after that here outside the if condition we will need to uh, write the out create the output variable in order to uh, get output from the command so output here sub process that get output and command that's it so we will get output from that command and client socket that send so we will get that output to the our uh, server machine so attacker machine and here we will output that 
in code here and after that we need to close the client socket so client socket dot close here perfect and we are done with that client uh, remote access uh, trojan here so we can open the uh, this here or we can also uh, run this program to see if, if everything is okay oh sorry here Python can't open the file main.py because not this is not the main.py here. This is we will need to use the current file and here we our connection is uh, refused because there is a no uh, server rat uh, open for the right now. So we will use the we will run the server rat firstly. Oops. And as you can see, listening for all incoming connections. So whenever we uh, gonna run this on the second terminal actually instead of running this from the terminal let's actually run it on the windows machine later but firstly uh, we will do what we will gonna do here we will explain all of the codes again so firstly uh, with this import socket code we are importing the socket model which provides a low level network functionality and uh, here we with sub process we are importing the sub process module which allows executing shell commands and here we are checking if the script is being run directly and not imported as a module. So we are defining the IP address of the server to connect to. And you need to change this to uh, the appropriate IP address of yours. And here we also have the attacker port, which is that we are specifying the port of the server to connect to. And make sure it matches the port used in the server side application. And we also have the attacker address. So we are combining the server IP address and port into a tuple. And then we are we have a client socket variable here, which we are creating a TCP socket object for the client. In this case, the socket AF init is the IP version 4 and socket stream is a TCP here. And we also have the client socket that connect uh, command here which is we are connecting the client socket to the server and after that we are printing it so we are printing a message to indicate that the client is connected to the server and we are creating starting an infinite loop for receiving and executing commands from the server then we have the command here we saw client uh, socket receive 1024 and decode here so with this command we are receiving the command from the server and the 1024 parameter specifies the maximum number of bytes to receive and after that we have if condition here so we are checking if the command received is to exit so if so we are breaking out of the loop and we have uh, we just have three lines of code left the, the first is uh, the output is we are executing the command using the sub process get output function and here we are writing output to this variable here and here we have a client socket uh, we are sending the output back to the server after encoding it into bytes and lastly we are closing the client socket here so now let me actually open my uh, windows uh, cmd here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this program here and here as you can see let's actually make it uh, on the top here and increase the font size so i copied the this client rat here and now we will run it on the our windows machine here so here we need to go to python uh, three hacker tools and we have this the client rat.py here uh, and as you can see here its size is increased because we move write more code in, uh, compared to previous lectures here and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna touch client here oh sorry this was a not touch here i think it was a take for the client rat here oh no i think it was a type to uh, get the read the text files and as you can see here we have the output here this is just a code that we wrote this is the exactly same code that we wrote on the pycharm here so now what we're gonna do is we are gonna run it right so python uh so we're gonna run it to the server and see what happens so python our client rat and as you can see client is connected to this ip address and let's see 
what happened and as you can see enter the command to execute and as you can see it's not quite uh, looking okay here so we're gonna change this here to this and after that we need to new line enter command that's it and here it will look more presentable now and we will run it again clear and run it again and as you can see we are address already in use and in order to fix that we need to terminate the previous uh, process using uh, so in order to terminate that we need to get an process id here uh, netstat will do that uh, work here for us and as you can see here we have a lot of information here so the process ids and so on so but instead and as you can see here it's a uh, one three here uh, this is the ip address of us and we can also use different command for term or ls of a here ls of here and as you can see here so we can also use the uh you can in order to fix it you can also use the different uh, port number for this and as you can see it's already fixed so you it might take some uh, five or ten seconds to restart and uh, close the network your network uh, driver here will close that connection automatically if it's not working here and as you can see we're listening for all incoming client connections and not, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the we're gonna go to our windows machine and here and as you can see here whenever we enter client is connected to this here so now we need to enter a command in this case let's actually use a tier here and as you can see here we got the exactly same output here so volume in drive c has no label here right and we can also use the widget to download some files from the internet here uh, let's actually try that so in order to do that we will use the curl here so in our, uh, now we will go to uh, open our browser and we will go to some website to find some image or we can also even we can download the entire uh, like applications and so on so like that go here but in this case let's actually use that uh, here let's actually download the Kali here or let's go to dr cook you have been hacked here and now uh, we will go to images and that's it so we can choose some of the so you have been hacked so we can download this here so we will copy the link and here is, this is as you can see this is the link and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna write the uh, curl command so curl the uh, the our website here and o here with uh, uppercase o uh, we will use the hack.gpg here and as you can see here it's uh, downloaded now now let's use a dir again and here we got an error here because the broken pipe mm, so we will run our program again on the and here as you can see let's see what happened I will run this again. So here we have this. Oops. Let's clear that. And here we're going to go to a, here again and let's the server up and as you can see here it's giving us error again and i want to also show you how to change the the port number of it and here we can change the port number for example 19,900 here and we also need to change it on the client side 19,900 so 19,900 here is it same yes so you can change the ports but you need the exact same ports to um if you want to your program work so um, here in this lecture we covered the client side 
code explanation and it establishes a connection with the server, receives command from the server and executes them using the sub process get output uh, and sends the output back to the server. So remember to customize the server IP address and port to match your server's details.